Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome to Community Unitarian Universalist Church on this first Sunday of the New Year. I'm, my name is Reverend Dr. Aya Doom. I'm the minister of this congregation, and I am glad to see all of you here, um, here in person and online. <laughs> I'm glad that um, you all made time today to come and gather for worship. We do gather for worship um, because we seek to stay connected with one another. And as we look forward to this year that lies ahead of us, we're reminded that our liberal faith calls us to engage the world, to engage our neighbor far and near. And this year, the world needs us even more. The world needs our care, our talents, our passion, our commitment to justice and dignity of each being. What we need this year is our faith to ground us so we don't lose our path and don't lose ourselves in the midst of whatever the year is going to bring to us. Glad you're here. Um, welcome. As we start this new year, we are thinking about the blessings and, and, and our hopes for the year. We are wishing well to one another. We're not sure what the year will be like. Uh, we have our fears and our worries about what it may bring, but we also have our hopes and dreams for what it can be. Each year, Marianne Webster Dictionary publishes the most looked up word for the year. Last year, that word was authentic. Authentic was characterizing what happened last year. The way um, they explained for how this word came to such uh, an interest was that they point to celebrities like Lainey Wilson, Sam Smith, and especially Taylor Swift, who were uh, making, making headlines with statements such as seeking their authentic voice and authentic self. And also the rise of artificial intelligence and its impact on artistic integrity of actors, video artists, and academics. Many have been worried about the increasingly blurry lines between real and fake. Authentic. The word authentic has become part of a brand to which celebrities and social media influencers aspire to these days. Even Elon Musk claims that people should be more authentic. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Irony. Next, next year's word, right? <laughs> we'll see. But we have apps and platforms that claim to make recordings of authentic experiences as their primary purpose of existence. And no matter what goes into production of these recordings, as long as people claim being authentic, the money follows. And that's making authenticity a performance. The word authentic itself is hard to define, and this might be also the reason why people are turning to the dictionary. Among the many meanings, authentic mean, means not false or imitation. It's a cinnamon, cin synonym of real and actual, and it's also true to one's own personality, spirit, or character. These are very desirable qualities, and it is very unfortunate that in the public domain, this word has become a marketing tool, and sometimes is used without substance behind it. The question before us is, when the word starts changing its meaning, how do we avoid losing the deep meaning it once contained? Do we simply discard the word? 
Or do we allow ourselves to reimagine it? Many of you know that English is not my native language. It is not even my second language. Um, even though I use English most of the time, it kind of has become my second language um, in my daily life. But I am fluent in three languages, and I have studied five more. I find languages easy and fun to study. But the main reason why I'm drawn to languages is because they allow me to cross the borders of imaginations and perceptions of realities. Those of us here who speak another language, you're familiar with the process of translating that happens every time you're using an, a language that's not your native tongue. Whether you're doing it automatically already because you're so fluent in the language, or maybe it takes a lot of effort on your part to, to do the translation and to find the right word. For me, there are those moments when a concept pops in my mind and I cannot find a word in English to translate it to. I end up sometimes you telling a long story <laughs> because English doesn't seem to have the word that would convey the full meaning of what I would like to say. And in the process, of course, I've lost the moment, I've maybe even lost the person, <laughs> right? But the same is true about words and concepts in English or any other language. They're not easily translatable um, to another language. But the translation also happens within the same language, too, not just across different languages. We interpret constantly what we hear from others. And sometimes the meanings of the same word are so different. We have different experiences. The word that we are hearing has played a significant role in our past in a certain way that when we hear someone else say it, we're suddenly puzzled. Do you really mean that? Um, when that is not how that word works for the other person. So in this process of having to translate um, or interpret the words for each other, we may actually end up gaining new meanings for words and for concepts. Why does this matter? Why do words matter? Why do we bother and spend so much time on particular words and phrases? Because words have transformative power in our lives. In her book, Fluent in Faith, UU Minister uh, Jean Harrison Nevar says that language shapes how we perceive and experience life. It impacts our ability to make meaning of that experience. And she writes, the words are essential tools for our imaginations. They define and they limit what is possible. As for the most part, our lives consist of that which we know, which we can name, and which we have words for. To illustrate the ways that we interpret what we do, I'll share with you a very well-known story. It is a story about a traveler who came upon a construction site where three people were working. When the traveler asked the first person, what are you doing? The first person replied, I'm laying bricks. The second person replied, I'm building a wall. And then, when the third one was asked, that person was humming a tune and said, with a big smile on the face, I'm building a cathedral. 
I believe that this story has evolved from its earlier version called Parable of the Three Stone Cut Cutters that was made famous by Peter F. Drucker in his 1955 book, The Practice of Management. However, whether we use stone cutters or bricklayers, we can still recognize the difference in the perspective of these three persons, how they interpret re their reality and the meaning they give to their work or activity. The words have the power to call us into deeper relationship with our world. They can help us make meanings um, of our lives and events that we experience. They help us to recognize and name what is sacred to us. They influence the way we see ourselves in the world and they also help us to reimagine ourselves and see our lives in a different light. About half of Americans still do New Year's resolutions, even though researchers have showed that only 9% of all who make resolutions actually complete them. That many, surprisingly, right? Um, about 23% of all the uh, people who make the resolution quit by the end of the first week. <laughs> 43 of them quit by the end of January. Resolutions are hard to keep because they require us to act, to choose, to behave differently each day. Instead of resolutions, what if we choose to approach the year that is ahead of us with open imagination. I wonder what things might be like, what they, how they might go, if instead of making resolutions and setting specific goals, we think about our intentions, how we, how, and how those might move us forward. Reverend Kristen Grassel Schmidt says, living with intention isn't about choosing exactly where we think we want to end up. We're doing whatever it takes to get there. Instead, it's a, it is about choosing how we want to be in the world, what we want our day-to-day -day experience of life to be, and allowing that to guide us to guide wherever we go and who we become. Some of us may have already thought about what kind of intention, with what intention we want to approach this new year, what we would like to see. Some of us may not have. So for today, I will invite you to consider being open. I have brought with me, I'll show you them to you, some angel cards with words of inspirations. Maybe there's a word that you will choose that you never even thought of would be yours. Or maybe that word is the word that will choose you. Um, this can be a spiritual practice if you allow it. Um, before choosing the word, if you would prepare yourself and be willing to engage the word that will come to you, um, you can meditate and reflect on it and see how it resonates with you. Um, I'll give you an example. If you choose the word tenderness, it may mean that you are encouraged to take actions that reflect the wisdom of your heart. Give generously, treat yourself and others with kindness and caring. If you pick the word purpose, this might be an invitation to clarify what you want and align your actions with that. Live with vision, intention, and determination. If you want some help with your word, the cards came with a small book. You can borrow the book. 
when you look at the um, other suggestions that are in here. And if the word really does not work for you, it just does not work for you. That can happen. I invite you to not throw the word out just because it is a someone else's definition. Allow yourself to maybe reimagine the meaning of that word. And if then it still doesn't work, it doesn't work. We can try and see if we can find another for you. But the words are yours to claim. Um, for some people, the same word can be life-giving. And for another person, we might find it frustrating or annoyed by it. Or, um, so words just are words um, for us to make what we will from them. So we have, um, these are words, and then I have a small basket with stickers. So if you are young and you would like a sticker, there's a sticker for the, that as well. So I invite you to come forward and choose your word or let the word choose you. Choose one, yes. <laughs> Hopefully it will work. <laughs> Do you want to choose one? Oh, yeah, I guess we should choose one for ourselves. Goodness. I am choosing the one that was last year's. <laughs> well, I hope you're all happy with the word you chose. It gave you some thought, a moment of pause, and really? <laughs> kind of response. Um, as we go forward celebrating new things already this year, may we carry space for all of our flaws and all of our longings and all of our love, remembering that the truly daring adventure of life is not to be better, better or best, but to show up holy, authentically, loving as ourselves. May we carry these prayers and carry each other into the new year. These were words by Beth Monholman. May it be so, blessed be, and amen.